Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video I want to do a run-through of uh, HTML and CSS used to insert and manipulate some images. Now I've got a number of other little videos on different parts of images, and this will have a little bit of repetition, but I want to kind of do a complete overview here, and this might take a couple of videos in and of itself. So I've got a blank web page set up, got the doc type definition, HTML tag, language attribute, character encoding meta, title of my page's images, and I've got a meta author in there. And I'm going to do some internal styles. I'm a big fan of external style sheets, but I think for demo purposes, a, um, a local file, or I'm sorry, an internal CSS is perfectly fine. And I'm going to go ahead and start off with some very generic reset rules. In fact, let me go ahead and put a comment in here. I'll do a reset rule comment. And then margin zero, padding zero, border zero. Those, whenever you don't use a unit of measurement there, it doesn't really matter. Zero percent, zero pixels, all really the same. So there's my reset rule. And just so you can have a clear idea of what that might look like, I'll jump down here, H1, working with images. And then uh, I'll do a little paragraph. Images are fun. OK, so I've got this saved. And I've actually got this already loaded up, I think, in my Chrome browser here. Let me just refresh. Excellent. And the impact of that reset rule gets all of these squished up there. So there's no margins, no padding, and of course, no default borders. But I can change my mind about that. Now, I think what I'm going to do next is go ahead and insert several images. And I think for the hell of it, I'm going to use the figure tag to start off with. So my uh, I'll do a headline to InDesign working with. And I'm going to use a figure. do that. And within this, I'm also going to have a fig caption. These are newer HTML5 elements, so you may not have seen these too much. But I'm going to go ahead and insert some HTML. I'm going to pause my recording, and you'll see what I've got here in just a second. OK, and I'm back. And I haven't tested this out yet, but I've used the figure tag in three different examples here. Let me scroll this so you can see all three of them. So I'm using the figure tag. And within that, I've got an image tag and then a fig caption. And I found three images over at um, iRubik's photo stream. Let me just bring this over real quick. So he or she has a bunch of wonderful images and under a Creative Commons license. So free to use as long as you don't modify them and pay attribute to the and, and you pay attribute to the source. So I will do that here. I'll follow those guidelines. So I've used the figure tag with an image tag inside of it. And of course, I've got the very important source attribute and then the very important alt attribute. The alt attribute provides a text alternative to an image, alternate, um, alternate text for someone who might have a vision impairment. Um, this shouldn't be confused with the title attribute. Normally, I would like to use a title attribute in my image also. But I'm going to skip my title attribute today just to keep the focus here a little bit. But the title attribute might end up having the same or very similar text as the alt attribute. OK. Uh, my images, by the way, are stored in an images subfolder. So if you did happen to see my folder, there's the images page that I'm currently working on. My images folder has the three images that I'll be working with. They're all JPEGs, which is pretty typical of photographs. Um, let's go ahead and refresh this, see how things are looking. And they're huge. I did download the large versions of these photos. So I'm going to use my style sheets. Let me go ahead and jump back over to the editor here. I'll use my style sheets in order to format those a bit. So I'm going to go ahead and say that all of my images, all image tags, so I'm just using a type selector there, they're all going to be um, 200 pixels wide. And just that little change right there will get these images down to a more reasonable size to work with. So those are my three images. So that is the basics for getting an image into your web page, making sure the image is stored where you think it is, certainly, all lowercase, no spaces still. And then I reference those images with my image tags. The figure tags and the fig caption tags, by the way, are not, they don't have any built-in formatting. We'll have to style those with the CSS. But I would like to tackle that here in a couple minutes. 
So basic images getting displayed on a web page. And then I think I'll go ahead and in the next video, we'll go ahead and format these images a little bit and including the figure tags with the CSS.